Hello and welcome back to episode 10 of the Very Average Podcast. Shaman, episode 10, double episode digits. 10. We did it. We've been doing this for two and a bit full months. Yeah. Two and great. a half. It's crazy. Full months. And then, like, it just feels like it's been forever since we recorded the last episode. Yeah, One absolutely minute forever. Ago. Like, I feel like so much has happened, even. Yeah, I know. So, I turned the cameras off and then I turned them back on. <laughs> and it's crazy. <laughs> So last week slash one minute ago, we were talking about our, um, our, a little bit about our childhood. Bit of, bit of um, pet talk. Pet talk. Cat of, talk. Cat talk. Horses. We were horsing around a bit. We were, hey. Hey. Funny because we were talking about Bojack Horseman too. Horsing around. Um, and Shaman, I know from experience being your friend. Yes. That. You have a deep-seated fear of birds. Yeah, fuck birds. Let's you know, explore like, that. Yeah, let's let's. This is gonna be like a nice like counseling session. Yeah, tell and, me where it came from. Oh man, where, where so did many it all things. Start? Okay, take me there. You know how I can't trust horses. Yes. You can't trust birds. Have you, you no. seen them? That the way they move their heads around. Yeah, they're they're like, so erratic. And their eyeballs point outwards. You don't know what they're thinking. Yeah. But okay, so there's been a few cases in my life where okay, so I started off as a kid, as like a young kid. I wasn't scared of all birds. I was just shit scared of bush turkeys. Oh yeah, because they would creatures. like you'd yeah. go to like you go to lake, a lake or something, and you're having a picnic with your family, and all time. of a sudden like a bush turkey just no. runs <laughs> out <laughs> of the bushes, and it's like whoa, what the fuck is that? It's not as cool as a Little real turkey, which would also thing. scare the shit out of me. Oh yeah, that's uh, probably even worse actually. <laughs> yeah. so that's like a cassowary meat with <coughs> a bush turkey, oh, <laughs> tiny cassowary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> terrifying but um yes i was i was always scared of bush turkeys i don't know i don't know why that was just a thing it was yep. just it's a thing that you scared of as a kid yeah and then i think i went to so one of the things is i went to the Cairns tropical zoo it was called wild world wild that the one world. up in palm cove yeah it was called wild world you know that shut then. down oh that's a shame it's gone that was a nice zoo sad sad face that's just that sucks they used to do this thing when it was called wild world Cain wild world that's what it was called. Wild World. Wild World. It's hard to say. Well, it's Wild Wild World and the Wild Wild West. Wild World. Wild 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 The two words just like blend into each other. Wild World. Wild World. Wild World. Um, but right, they you want to Wild No. <laughs> they used to do this thing called cane toad racing. And <laughs> you'd pick a cane toad. That sounds and gammon. They, and they would put it in this ring thing and then they like, everyone's like, you're in these little compartments mm. and then they lift it up and the you had to like pick a cane toad that would win just that, getting you getting you into betting real early that's disgusting and then you'd have to see if they'll like jump over the ring at the end wow i know they do that in a pub in palm cove now that's probably... oh port douglas the one right on the corner uh, of the market true. They, do, they do cane code cane code right cane code cane code cane code cane code, cane code. Cane cane toad racing. racing horrible Worst, Gross. Worst things in the world. Cane toads, but disgusting the zoo creatures. It was cool. There was like cool bird shows, cool snake shows. It was just a great time. Yeah, but nice. I remember as a kid, I was wearing my sandals. My, <laughs> my toes were showing. Love it. And there was, we were walking by, there was like a pond and there was like a swan. Oh, cute. Yeah. Yeah, it was a swan. Beautiful. And um, you, were, it you pecked, could say it, you were next to a swan lake. Swan pond. Swan pond. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite as nice. No. But um, I think, I can't remember if it was a black swan or a white swan or whatever, but it pecked my toe and it hurt. And I was like, wow, mm. fuck that bird. And then I remember going to like the Hartley's Crocodile Farm and them telling me swans are actually more dangerous than crocodiles and kill more people a year or some shit. I was like, what? whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know swans. if that was, yeah, I don't know if that was real info, but man. They got those teeth, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, have then, you seen swan And teeth? then have you ever it's seen scary. a pelican? Oh, yeah. Their, what the their fuck? Their beak can hold more than their belly can. What is a pelican? Man. Have you seen them every eating time. fish? Yeah. They're like... <laughs> 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 so, which every time my dad would see a pelican, he'd go to my sister. India, it's a pelican. <laughs> Its beak can hold more than its belly can. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> she would hate it. But then he did For it context, to me. For context, your sister's name is India. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no, she, she, no. Not like... <laughs> the country. Not like... Australia. 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 Pelican. <laughs> I'm actually got a, I got a good Pelicans. story about my sister's name later. But, um, yeah, so pelicans are terrifying. Terrifying. And, then, and their teeth. And then, okay, and then primary school. Mm-hmm. Uh, for about two or three months a year, plovers would just oh. nest their way onto our school oval. And if you were running laps of the oval, 
half, like a quarter of the way around, you would just be chased by birds. Yeah. And you would run your fastest time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just, I distinctly remember like just running and I didn't know they were there. And then all of a sudden I see one of my friends just sprinting at me and going, you were like, ah, run! and then <gasps> they duck. And it's like this, like a war scene. They duck and then the plover just, so, 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 yeah, that's like, so, so, so. bombers. And, like, oh, and, poof, poof, poof. and then, so I never got hit by one of those. So, cause they would, it was usually just to scare you off. Yeah. They've got pretty like f- weird wings that if they're, they hit you, they're, they're just weird animals. Um, yeah. So there was that. And then I think just on plovers, the worst. Um, when back throwback to when we were when we were talking about Tassie, our farm down there had plovers, and they nest in the middle of the ground for yeah. some reason. And then they're like, "Get the fuck away! Get from away my from kids. my earth!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they had these little tiny eggs, mm-hmm. little like spotty brown and shit coloured eggs. Yeah, just because that's what they were. They were shit coloured. Yeah, birds. Shit birds. Shit birds. All birds are shit. So shit. But I remember vividly going. Just strolling around, riding my huffy through the paddock. Oh, throwback Ooh. to last week. Riding the horse through the paddock, maybe. Um, before walking. the accident, obviously. Before, be- before the incident. Um, or just walking, going for a stroll. We uh, built a bunch of fences down the paddock. We um, dug out a little creek through the paddock. Nice. Um, we also had this sick, like, green gemstone rock underground in the True. paddock. And we got the this like creek dug out by an excavator, excavator, escalator, uh, by an escalator, <laughs> and all this cool green gemstone rock. I thought we Did like sell stru- it? I thought we like struck gold, but it's just like dirt that's hard. <laughs> and, hard um, and green. These little fucking plovers, their little nests. And I remember I used to get so angry at them. This is probably really bad, but also fuck plovers. I used to like throw their eggs. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I had, I still have a scar on my head from a plover. You're a devil kid. <laughs> Wait, I need to turn around to show all those listening. See that scar? Plover. Right, it's like here somewhere? Yeah. Plover. Man. I will never forget okay, that day. See, my relationship with plovers isn't that intense. Um... I'm scarred for life. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck those birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I stomp their nest. But then, care. but then like just general like <laughs> bird things. It's just, I've never trusted or liked birds. Like no. if someone's got a bird as a pet, I'm like, cool, get it away from yeah. me. Like, also, you got a budgie, fuck that budgie. You can yep. never trust anything that can look in two directions at the same time. <laughs> I used to have a budgie. It was called Peppy. It was cute. Nice. Yeah. It was blue. Fuck that bird. Yeah. It was cute. Nah, budgie's okay. I just, just it lived in a cage its just, entire life. Yeah, how, how sad, sad is that? That's why I was like, do you really want a pet bird? No one no one should give a pet bird. Unless you've got a good, like... Birds are supposed to fly hundreds of kilometers yeah. and be free and... Be eat free and Worms and shit. And attack shaman. And not live in a cage. Yeah. And just eat shaman. E- and eat Sean's shaman. head. And <laughs> Sean's head. Mm. Um, but yeah, Nasty so I was mm. just... I've just always been scared of birds. And then there was a tipping point mm-hmm. and it was about... Three years ago, right. I was living in Brisbane. Ooh. Ebony and I, we'd been living in our first place together that yep. we were renting. Yep. Before that, I was living in uni accommodation. Yep. So we'd been living there for a few months. Mm-hmm. It came into springtime because mm-hmm. that's when birds are like, yeah, fuck everybody. I'm going to kill That's where the magpies everybody. are out. Oh. Swooping season. It's called swooping season. Yeah. Fuck. Australia has a season for swooping. A whole season dedicating to getting attacked by a native animal. Yeah, man. Everything in Australia just kills you. But, so I don't even know what type of bird this was. Okay, so one day I just came, I was I was helping a man, uh, someone, I think I played a show for a friend down in like Mullumbimby. Yeah. Um, played some and, drums. Yeah, played some drums. And then I was like, oh, it was a long weekend. I'm going to, I'm just going to drive home. Long drive, like two hour drive or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I got home as soon as I got out of the, like out of the car, just <laughs> something hit me in the head. Oh really hard dude that feeling when I something someone hits you in the head rock at me you, you know the feeling when you hurt, like hit your head really hard and you kind of get this like metallic taste yeah and everything just kind of goes a bit uh, yeah horrible I, feeling. I thought someone threw a rock at me as soon as because like, i literally <clears throat> just stood up out of the car and then bam and then i was like whoa what the fuck and then i look up to the fence next to my door where i needed to go and there's bird just going 
I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck this guy. He wants to fucking go. And then I ran inside. I was like, everybody open the door. <laughs> open the door. Come here. And I ran here. inside. It's coming. <laughs> and I was bleeding. Oh, shit. On the side of my head where it cut me open. With its little nasty beak. Yeah. I could have gotten the bird flu for all I knew. Damn. Man. That would, yeah. And then so I was like, from that point onwards, if a bird flies near me, I will flinch. If you like, see oh, a bird. Ah! shit yeah I see like a bird just just doing its own thing as I'm walking from my car to, to my office like at work and it's just it's just flying it's not even coming near me and I see a shadow of it and I flinch <laughs> I just get flashbacks you got, you've got PTSD from birds it's horrible there's, there's about th- there's probably three birds that I like what are they? the willy wagtails kid sparrows dope and rainbow lorikeets they're Ooh. so pretty they're loud, but they're pretty. Yeah. I like those sunbirds that just live on a little uh, string as well. I love sunbirds. They're kind of cute. Just four birds. How do they just live on a string? Crazy. Because they, they build their nest. Yeah, crazy. Like, because they're everywhere in Cairns. We everywhere. We always had a sunbird nest. They're like this big. They're and so they're cute. so cute. Yeah, see, I like the little birds. Yeah. Big Not those big boys with the big beaks. Oh, big boys, big beaks. Oh. Not about it. But yeah, birds. Fuck birds. And Fuck birds. Um, I'm, not, I'm not shy to admit that I hate birds. Yeah. That's fair enough. I don't think there's... What's your deep-seated fear? Okay. My worst fear... Failure. My big... Yeah. <laughs> it's failure. It's it's not having a job and living off Centrelink. Mm. That's actually a big fear of mine, actually. Oh, yeah. I don't want to do that. Never again. Doesn't sound fun. Never again. That was uni. Yeah. For, like, a few months before I got a job. I didn't get Centrelink. Yeah. I almost didn't get Centrelink. Yeah, but you cried on the phone. I did. I was seven. So I moved to Brisbane when I was 17. Hello, notification. Thanks. I was, I moved to Brisbane when I was 17 and I lived in the shack. I think episode seven, six, seven, eight. The we talked about Flower Shack. We talked about the Orkham Flower Shack. Um, and I had no job. I sold my uh, 2002 Nissan Pulsar. For some cash to move to Brisbane. And then you got a real shitty convertible red Beamer. Not shitty. My favorite car I've ever owned. <laughs> it was Even sick. over my current it, Audi. I loved that BMW. It was BMW. sick, but it wasn't like... It was broken. Yeah, it was... But it was sick. It was cool, but it was so broken. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, where was I going with that? Uh, oh, Centrelink. yeah, Centrelink. So, I applied for Centrelink and they came back to me and they were like, sorry, you are ineligible because your parents are earning too much money Same. and they should support you. Uh, and I was like, well, that's not going to happen. And my parents were like, "Like, you know, we earn enough money for ourselves, but not enough money to support another whole rent Adult. and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Like, the, no, one, no one should be in the position where their parents have to pay rent for them and stuff like that. So I thought... I was. I Just thought... Fuck Centrelink. Yeah, fuck Centrelink. But I thought... I'm going to call up Centrelink or whatever. And I was on my last legs. Um, I only have two and I was on my last set. Uh, and yeah, only two. Yeah. I, I was trying to get a job. So I called up um, like all of my mates that I knew that lived in, worked in hospitality. Um, they all live in hospitality too. Um, and I ended up uh, eventually getting a job in a bar um, that I got made redundant for because the owner of went to jail for laundering cocaine money through the business. I feel like that that's pretty common with bars. Something like that. But anyway, I, so I was 17 at the time, so I couldn't work at the bar anyway. I was two months off or three months off turning 18. So there was three months of my life where I couldn't get a job in a bar and I had no idea what else to do. Mm. Uh, and I applied for a bunch of cafes cause I was a barista for a bit. Um, but I got a phone call from a social worker at Centrelink and they were like, Hey, so because you're not 18, you've been assigned a social worker. Um, so I was like, sweet, here's my story. Um, I moved to Brisbane. I've got no money. I've got no job and I can't get a job because I'm studying full time. That was obviously I could get everyone works when they're studying. Yeah. But this is, this is my people, sop story. Some people don't. What? Like I remember. How do you afford they, all the goon? I had their parents. Right. They, they live with their parents. The parents pay for their like weekly allowance and of food. Goon. And then they their parents are like, Hey, you just focus on uni because you got to get through this. Oh, I wish. I remember. Yeah, I was doing. Like, Actually, no, I don't wish. Fuck that. I, I'm so. I'm no, too independent. No. I but, need to like do it for myself. But it would have been nice would've through been nice, uni though. to have like a bit yeah. of extra time to actually focus on uni. Yeah. But it would have like, been nice, but, but anyway, yeah. so I cried on the phone to the social worker and I was like, oh, I just don't know what I'm gonna do. Like my parents can't 
afford to pay my rent and I'm just going to run out of money and I'm going to be on the street. And they were like, all right, what we'll do is we'll make you unable to live at home due to circumstances that cannot be discussed. Man. That was the it Makes thing. it seem like your parents are fucking beating you. Right. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> rich. So I called my mum and I was like, um, hey mum, so Centrelink's going to call you. Can you just like brush them off and tell them? Like, don't, don't lie to them. Just like tell them you don't care. Don't care. Yeah. So they called my parents and um, I don't know what they said, but they said, I don't know, they're probably just like, oh yeah, whatever. He's, he's in Brisbane now. I don't care. Whatever. Yeah. He's, he's on his own. I don't, I don't even deal with it. So they called me back and they're like, all right, so we can give you Centrelink. Um, because I moved from Cairns yeah, fuck you. to Brisbane. Yeah. Your regional relocation. They give you a, if, if you move from a, a regional or a, a outback area to a main city to study, they give you a relocation bonus, and which is like Cairns five is K, <laughs> yeah, $5,000 five, five a year for the first year and then three K for the second year and, then and two like, and a half every year after that yeah. while you're studying. So I studied for two years. So I got five grand, which... It was really good because I was able to buy a, a laptop yeah. for uni. I was able to buy my textbooks um, and I bought a car, which eventually was good because I could go to work. Yeah. Uh, and I, even though there's a lot of public transport and stuff like that, um, it was just a lot easier to just be able to drive to work. So it was money well spent, but um, eventually I ended up just getting a job mm. uh, and doing working at a call center, doing debt collection. And that paid me enough to, to survive. Yeah, that fucking relocation all my friends got that because yeah. all my friends are like yeah I can, I i'm getting centrelink, centrelink. I'm getting oh yeah what are you benefits. doing with your five grand i'm like i got nothing Fuck you and yeah. i was like yeah my parents were supporting me mm. but i didn't have a random 5k to spend on buying a camera and stuff like that yeah. but like it's a great thing because like it's an awesome thing it's expensive to move so like ebony was on like could get she got it she as got well. it as yeah. well. she could buy a camera for her uni degree and everything. yeah because she was studying perfectly. photography yeah yeah but, but I... like it's so hard if you're like you're, you're being supported, but you're not being supported to the point where, like, your parents can give you a fuck ton a of money. A salary worth, yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not realistic, and it's not even, like, okay to expect or ask for that, no. in my opinion. Like, work for your money. Yeah. yeah. So, I worked for a call center, and then I did my degree in two years. I just smashed it out, and then... Trimesters. Then I did, yeah, so I did an additional, like, summer semester every Ooh. year. So, I didn't have to do three years. And then... I started my journey into full time work. To business. Business doing to business. Being things. an adult businessman. Yeah. Big old big business boy. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. So big what's business. your deep seated fear? Oh yeah. That was so Centrelink. Yeah, but my had my actual, actual deep seated fear. When I was living in Tassie, we used to obviously ride our bicycles. My our, our huffies, huffy. <laughs> up and down. From now on we're gonna just refer yeah. to every bike as a huffy. Used to jump on the, the huff. Ooh. Um, did you ever take to like the bike jumps, like oh, yeah. the local bike Dude, jumps? I lived and on a farm. We made bike you jumps. You wouldn't actually get any air, but you'll just go over them. Cause you're like, oh, I'm, yeah, a, yeah, I'm a little bitch. I'm a little bitch. Yeah. yeah. And there'd be the one that you'd like ride around. Oh yeah. Cause it was too big. And you then like, <laughs> there's like the jumps, but it's like one of those ones where you turn oh, the big. bank. Yeah. The bank yeah. and you ride up in the bank and you're like, Whoa, I'm almost sideways. Yeah. But you won't. That's sick. That was a huge one in cans. Do you remember the, the BMX tracks? Oh, yeah. That. Wait, up the, in Cairns? The where are those ones? The near the showgrounds, I think. Up, ah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Bungalow. Where they used to do the, BM, do they used to do like BMX stuff there? Yeah, it was yeah. A BMX track. Yeah, they had the sickest banks. But yeah, we had we had our own BMX jumps. Yeah. that we just built out of dirt because yeah. we're That's farm boys. Um, but yeah, my biggest fear is running or riding a huffy next to a barbed wire fence, and it catching on my face and cutting my face open. Is that a fear that you think about often? More often than I should. You're like, oh, I'm really scared of this. And it's I'm like, like, when are you going to be doing that? I'm scared of barbed wire fences. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Like, going quickly adjacent parallel to a barbed wire fence and just getting my face too close and being like, ching. Terrified of it. That's 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 really hard for you like, to overcome. Spiders How, are scary. Snakes are scary. Like but barbed do, wire if fences you wanna, like, But like, if you want to get into photography... Taking a shallow depth of field shot of a barbed, barbed wire fence, fence that's is it. how you start. That's the that's which the I actually photo. I know you've done, mm. and I know you've you, done. You did it on tour. <laughs> I got I got over my oh yeah I did do my first ever photo pretty much. Yeah, I got I'm getting over my fear of barbed, barbed wire fences. fences. It's not okay when I'm still next to a barbed wire fence. Totally fine. 
it's when I'm moving quickly next to one, I get Ooh. really like uncomfortable and scared. I don't know how often I've moved quickly next to a barbed wire fence. Mm. See, you never, you were never a farm boy. Farm boy. Yeah. But I would, Yeehaw. I would quite often ride my huffy next to a barbed wire fence. Um, I always wanted a little Pee Wee 50 or a little quad. Oh, same. Just Even though down I've the never had a big enough property and I've never been into the motorbikes. But as a kid, I'm like, I want a fucking Pee Wee 50. Oh, dude. I remember when I lived in Tassie, me and my best mate, Sami. Shout out to Sami. Sami. Um, Salami. We used to, we, we bought one of those ginormous tins from like chicken feed, which if anyone in Tasmania is listening to this, chicken, shout out chicken feed. Because a little goes a long, long way. <laughs> chicken feed is all you need because a little goes a long, long way. I'm going to ask my um, my cousin about that. See if he knows it. Jump on YouTube and look up chicken feed commercial. Is it a Tasmanian thing? Chicken feed is like Crazy Clark's. Uh, it's like okay. the Tassie version. I'm pretty sure they're owned by the same people. I was, I was picturing like a, $2 store. a big tin of chicken feed. No. So <laughs> it was one of those tins from Crazy Clark's yeah. with like the money wrapped around it. And yeah. I got the huge one and we put a A4 bit of paper on it with like a picture of a Pee Wee 50. We needed $200. Yeah. That- and we went around the school asking for donations <laughs> well, you donate for our to mini our motorbike course. fund. Um, and I think we got like $6 or something and we ended up spending it at the tuck shop. Bought yourself like a slushie and a pie or something. Oh yeah, we did. Two t- slushies and two pies because back then it? money was worth more. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember um like tuck shop lunch orders? Dude, like you, you wouldn't. You so wouldn't. So good. You wouldn't just go to the tuck shop and order. Yeah. You, you bring your your brown paper, paper bag. With, it written on it uh, with like uh, with a sharpie. Yeah. And uh, my mum would write it for me, and it would say like, "We want this pie, two dollars." Sauce, this, 30 cents. 30 cents. And, yeah. and plus uh, chalky milk. milk. Yeah. yeah. Or strawberry or milk. Dolby milk. I, was, uh, I wasn't I was a cultured back then. I would have gotten a chalky milk. Yeah, I was a Dolby milk boy. But I'm I'm 100% strawberry milk boy now. Very good. Very good. 100%. I remember... How good were they? And then you just, just like... You put them in a box and then... And then you get someone, lunch back. Someone in your class takes before lunchtime. Yeah, takes them and then someone's like dedicated to that day. Going to get the lunch orders. Going to go pick up the lunch orders and they come back with a tub... Full of lunches. Pies, chalky milks, strawberry milks. Juices, what an amazing... Imagine sausage if, rolls. Imagine if that happened at workplaces. Imagine if someone oh, took your lunch order in the morning on a brown paper bag and your lunch just appeared hot and fresh and bring delicious. Bring it back. And it was like four bucks. And it, you could buy a, a lunch that made you so full for five bucks with change. Yeah. It was so good. And then my tuck shop had like a slushy machine and stuff. So like... During Ooh, was lunch. it a slush puppy? No, it was oh. actually, it was like, cause you know how like no primary way. schools had those like health kicks yep. where they couldn't sell certain things. But they brought so, in lols. Yeah. Lols. <laughs> I had them in high school. Fizzy juice. <laughs> um, and then, and then they had like quenches as well. Ooh. Oh um, yeah. 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 Um, and so that was like um, primary school. nutrient water. Nutrient water. Oh, Ooh, was if you got the a dragon if, fruit, if one. you got a, um, a chicken burger, and a nutrient water for lunch. That was like the order. But so, but they had a oh slushy machine. But it was like oh, it was like fruit flavored slushy. It wasn't like a overly like sugary. It sugary. Like yeah. yeah, it was it was sugary and it wasn't good for you. But it would be it would be like mango. One one of them's like a mango slushy and one of mm. them's like a raspberry slushy or mm. something like that. It's not like frozen coke. So yeah, so good though. So when I was in Kansas State High School, shout out. Um, Gross. Thursday was pork rib roll day. Ooh. And dude, I, so I ended up like when I, when I started high school, it was always like, I'd make my lunch or mum and mum and dad would make my lunch for me. And I'd take that to school. But then and we ended up all just getting lazy and they would give me five bucks a day to go buy lunch. Yeah. So I got a little $5 note and go and buy my lunch. Um, and then I got a job and I just bought it myself. But Thursdays was pork rib roll day. Yeah, nice. And this was like the softest, most plump delicious like i don't know it was like a milk bun maybe it was just like a soft bread roll that was like a hot dog bun Mm. and then they put a big like boneless pork rib covered in this unbelievably good barbecue sauce and then like one tiny little shred of iceberg lettuce popped in there and i fuck this is healthy i fuck i shit you not these were the most delicious thing i've ever eaten in my life one of them still be milk Best lunch ever. My, um, or nutrient order. My or high school, lull. my high school tuck shop order was a hot dog with cheese and tomato sauce. Oh, 
They did they did them every day. Yum. And I would get, I think, a nutrient water, like the dragon fruit. Yeah, or the, dragon, or the, the pomegranate one. The I dragon think. fruit one. Yeah. yeah. I'd grab one of those ones. And that would be like my That's high school go-to. tuck shop order. Yeah. But they used to do like, I think on Thursdays for a while, there was like a partnership with like Domino's or Eagle Boys. And you could oh, get like, little pizza boxes? Yeah, the little pizza boxes. Or they'd do sushi some days. Or Ooh. some days they'd do like curry. Man, you had fancy ass tuck shop. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. The and fanciest thing we got they was burgers. Zinger Burgers. Oh, from KFC? No. Oh, well, that's... They just got, like, spicy chicken fillet pack, yeah. like, things, and then they ovened them or fried yeah. them themselves, threw it with another, like, one piece of iceberg lettuce. Yeah, nice. Healthy. Slapped it on, bit of supercharged They had, sauce. like, a really low budget for iceberg lettuce, so they, they did. had to spread it thin. Yeah. It was, um, like, one lettuce a day for the entire school. <laughs> but we, um... <laughs> oh, do you remember Pizza Rounders? Oh, do I remember Pizza Pizza rounders. Pizza pockets for some people. Are... How good are these mouth-melting treats? Yeah, they are. Like yeah, you do would... not bite into it while it's still hot. You would ruin your day yeah. on a pizza rounder, but it would also like be amazing. When you burn the roof of your mouth and all of a sudden you have just dangling skin yeah. for like a whole day. It's yeah. just that. Sucks, but worth so it. worth it. Yeah. I remember I used to go around to a mate of mine's place, Bryce. He lived in um, somewhere. Why, where, where, Whitfield somewhere, Whitfield. maybe? I've been to Bryce's house. Maybe Whitfield? And his mum always used to have pizza rounders yeah. in the freezer. We We're talking to... about the same Bryce. Probably. We are talking about yeah. the same Bryce. Um, but yeah, heck is pizza rounders. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Yeah, I think I... Because I went, I, I went around to Bryce's. I think I was I was mates with Bryce before I even knew you. Probably, yeah. Yeah, and then... Um, he was a drummer. He is a drummer. I yeah. think we met somehow and we both liked the same music and, and he's a drummer. Drums. Drums. Playing drums. Um, yeah, we went and hang, hung out and... I can't remember. Might have gotten a pizza rounder. We were in a band together called Violation of the State. Yeah, I, rem- I remember that. We used to cover Asking Alexandria. Yeah. It was sick. Really? And Mitchell Cave from um, Chase Atlantic was our vocalist. Yeah. And he used to scream. There's a video on YouTube. I think it's made private. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't think it's public anymore. I think, it, I think it got made private, but man, that was a good time. I think I've still got photos. I remember playing that gig and I wore a bear suit. Yeah, because you were seen. Yeah, raw. I had, or still have, XD. a, you know those, like, animal onesies that became really popular? Oh, yeah. My mates and I, we bought them before they were, like, a big thing. Oh, yeah. Um, and I got a dinosaur onesie. Ooh. And we all went to the movies in it one time. That's cool. And we caught a bus and people were looking, looking at us and, and you were like, like cool. I don't give a fuck. I'm with my friends. I'm with my friends and, like, people honking their horns and stuff. And you were like, what's up? I'm a fucking I'm dragon. I'm a fucking dinosaur. Dinosaur. Yeah. I've got, uh, so... My old housemate, Carla, shout out to Carla, best chick I know. Yeah. She gave me a Spyro onesie oh. for my like 23rd birthday or 22nd birthday or something. How good Spyro. So good. She, oh. we, we share a, a, a real heavy passion for Spyro. But how so. good is Spyro? It's I the saw, best game ever made. So there's something. I will, I will say it. It's the best game ever made. Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage slash Gateway to Glimmer. Best game, hands down, ever made. I'm calling it. They're good, but not best game. But uh, in my humble opinion, Spyro Two best game ever made. There's I saw this thing going around on Facebook and Twitter, and it's like someone shared four games from their childhood, and it's like share your four games that define your childhood. What were yours? I haven't thought about all of them, but mm. uh, a Crash Bandicoot game. Which one? Probably because I'm not as old as that some people i love the originals mm. but i think i got into it at like wrath of cortex because on my ps2 oh yeah and then like twin saturday came out and all yeah, that. yeah 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 like cortex wrath of cortex game. crazy long load times for some re- reason though but oh, yeah and but it was just it was just crash bandicoot just falling yeah in this like color like, thing oh. and it would go on forever but i loved wrath of cortex but then i i love like the original three as oh, well yeah. but um yeah, so I'd say Crash Bandicoot, uh, the first game I ever owned on PS2, which is probably my favorite nostalgic game series of all time, is Jack and Daxter. Oh yeah, good game. Yeah, see, like, everyone's like, oh, it's like Ratchet and Clank. I'm like, oh, I'm a Jack and Daxter boy. Controversial. I never got into Ratchet and Clank or Jack, Jack and Daxter until I was, like, 20. Yeah. And then I got into them and I was like... Ratchet and Clank's This great. is just as good as Spyro. Yeah. Like, why oh, didn't I were. play these? <laughs> and then there's also... So, I would say... They don't okay, make games like they used Crash to. Crash Bandicoot, uh, Jack and Daxter. Yep. And so, at the moment, two of my um, favorite nostalgic games are made by Naughty Dog, who also make my favorite game of all time, The Last of Us. 
dope. They're just hands down the best publisher. Yeah, Naughty um, Dog's the best. Yeah, and then and they also do Uncharted, and Uncharted's fucking good. Mm. And what's that other game? We've we've talked about this in the podcast before, but there's like you drink an there's like this energy drink that turns people into like crazy sloppy zombies, and it's all like punk looking stuff. Is that um? An orange infamous? title. Is that infamous? No, no. it's a two word no, no, title. No, no, no. And you're just like this punk dude that's like. Yeah, I know like, the one you're talking about. I can't um, remember what it's called. And we've talked about this before, and I forgot what it was called. Is that the one? That, uh, you've got like guns, and you have to do these like things. It wasn't as good as the OG Naughty Dog games, though. But um, I M O. But my um, yeah. So I'd say what well, Crash Bandicoot, Jack and Daxter, mm-hmm. and then. Probably Sly Raccoon. If you never played Sly Raccoon, never you're played, I've also never heard missing out. You're this is okay, this was like the PlayStation just mascot wars. Yeah, they had Ratchet and Clank. They had Jack and Daxter. They had Sly Raccoon. They had Crash Bandicoot. Spyro and Spyro. These were all like Sly very, Raccoon. very like popular yeah. like potential pl- uh, PlayStation mascots. You also had like Kratos from God of War oh, yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So there was all of the they were trying. It was like. Who's going to be the Mario of PlayStation? Yeah. And all of them are just fucking iconic. Sly Raccoon's yeah. the best game. You're, you're a raccoon and you're a thief. You're in... It's like that Sly Raccoon is Thievius Raccoonus. And you... Raccoonus. um you're, you're... I think your family's murdered, but you're mm-hmm. like... And you're the last in like last a raccoon. long line of like this raccoon thief family. And yeah. um, you have to like... There's like the fiendish five, Ooh. and they're like made up of like a panda, a crocodile, a frog, and this like scary owl. Yeah, and yeah. like there, and you have to go to each one of the fiendish five's place and like unlock secrets and get some figure out like your history and stuff. Mm. Best fucking game. I used to play it all the time. So I'd say that would be one, and then the fourth game might be like Metal Gear Solid Three. Have you ever played a Metal Yeah, yeah, yeah. Metal- I used to play with my cousins. But Weird. Good. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's mine. There's the OGs. I was like straight... I'm a Spyro fanboy. So the OG oh, trilogy, the there's a couple... Like the couple that came after the OG trilogy and then the modern reboot of it. And then I never got into the that shit where you like plug a thing into a dock and then... Uh, Sky- Skylanders? Skylanders? Yeah, yeah no, that's dumb. It. But Spyro, OG. Crash Team Racing and Crash Nitro Kart. <sighs> Did you ever play Crash Games. Crash Tag Team Racing? Oh yeah, that was the sequel. Not as good, but still, still, still cool. so good. You could do like barrel rolls and shit. Yeah, and then, uh, weird one, a little bit left field, uh, a game called Kaya Dark Lineage. Ooh, yeah. Everyone has this one game that no one has this ever is, played or this heard is a, of. This is top. This is top two for me. Spyro Two and Kaya Dark Lineage. Yeah. So you're you're this girl. Um, who's got like these sick dreadlocks and big hands. And then <laughs> her dad was like a crazy scientist. And you're in this world where the bad guys are wolves. Uh, and they're like, they stand on two legs and they're like crazy wolves. And you like, the whole thing is like upgrading your kit, getting like better slingshots and yeah. like bo- boomies. You had boomies that you kept in your, in your hair. Like little boomerangs. So you like picked it up and you're like, <laughs> back into the hair. It was the sickest game. Um, and I just remember playing that. Like it, I love those old games like Spyro and Kaya because they've got the longest um, stories. Yeah. You could play and the they're, stories they're just, for weeks and, and weeks. And they're just weeks. cool platform games. Really cool. Pl- and yeah, it was, miss it was like that. Game. Like Spyro 3D platformer kind yeah. of thing. That's what it was. Same with Kaya. Um, and then what else did I used to play? I remember my first ever PS1 game that I used to play was a pirated disc um, of the PS1 demo disc. Ah, oh, the demo discs. But I, it was a pirated version of My it. uncle gave Wave me... Wave Runner. Well, it was, you were on a jet uh, ski. Uh, like, I think I played... My uncle used to give me... Because he used to get all, like, the... Um, he used to do, like, the PlayStation magazines and stuff. My yeah. uncle Phil, he's like he's a big PlayStation fan. Hmm. Um, and it was always cool because I would go to his house and play, like, Grand Theft Auto yeah. or something. Um, but, yeah, he used to always, like, have those magazines and he would I would, I would get, like... I think I've, I had a few, like, of the PS2 demo discs mm. from him and from my cousin and stuff like that, and just from random places. And, man, some of the games on those were so much fun, but you could only play one level. I remember having yeah. one of the Ratchet and Clanks, and I could only play one level. And you played that one level? And I played that one level <laughs> so much. But, yeah, I thought of two other games. So did I. Which could also 
they could swap something out. But were um, they like more recent than your OGs? Because they're the bit two more re- bit more recent. Yeah. Um, a little bit older, but still young on yeah. my PS2 days. GTA San Andreas. Yeah. Because man, I played the fuck out of I that. Got into it. Where? I played it. Great game. Ah shit! Like ah shit! Again. Here we go again. <laughs> I played it, but I never got super. I into never it. finished it because I didn't care about the story. I just, just wanted, wanted to blow shit up and blow shit cars. up. I used to throw like little C four bag bomb thingies on the road, heaps yep. of them, um, and then just wait for cars to drive on top of them and then blow them up and see how far high they could go. <laughs> and I still <laughs> that's I what GTA is about. I still remember the cheat codes. <coughs> oh yeah, that's like R one R two L one R two down down right left. Up left, down right, up left. That's, That's like one of the one of my two games was Need for Speed Most Wanted. Oh, yeah. And I, I remember best I won R two L one L two up down up down left right left right. That was the code that you unlock like something in the and you do it in the home screen and you uh, unlock something, like super basic but yeah. you unlock like all the cards or something Dude. and you had the blacklist blacklist and you used to like beat all the blacklist most, and get that cars and you get that sick BMW oh. is the best Need for Speed game hands down the OG time. most wanted not the shit remake no not that that game sucks I'm talking about the yeah the PS2 just original most with wanted. like Jessica or whatever her name was and like. Yeah. You could um you could win the p- someone's pink slip yeah at the end but you, re- you, you but you have to pick one of the three things yeah no two of the three I think you picked two out of three and, and one of them was a one's pink, pink slip I used to I had a I had a I system just, I had a system you save right before the boss battle and then you go into it and you smash out the three races and if you don't get the pink slip you just hold down the on button turn it off turn it back on do the races again do the races again yeah that I was my that. system my system was like I always pick. One of the, <laughs> it was never pick two of the sides. You pick the middle and one of the sides, and yeah, it, it most of the time got most it. Most of the yeah. time got it. I mean, it's all just chance. But my um, yeah, my car in that game. But the other game I thought of was Final Fantasy X. Ooh, and yeah, man, good game. Final Fantasy is so good, and that game, like for a PS2 game, like, it had sick graphics. Mm. It's huge, and I don't, th- I, c- I think I finished it. I can't remember. I'm very that, good at not that's finishing a games. Game. Yeah. Really hard to understand the storyline if you don't know Final Fantasy. Oh, yeah, if well. you don't understand it. Yeah. yeah. My other game was Tony Hawk's American uh, Wasteland. Uh, oh, okay. The I was a... first and only open world Tony Hawk game at its time. True, yeah. So yeah, it wasn't yeah, just yeah. like you play a level and you do tricks. It had a full story where you were building up this sick skate park. But Underground like kind of had that, but it was like areas yeah. that you move to so you could, kind of you could world. free skate around everywhere yeah. and do like sick trick challenges and then find you if you had to do like a 360 vert flip off a dinosaur and then someone would come pick it up in a tow truck and take it to your skate park yeah, that you're building works. this is mine now so cool i remember that but but i'm just gonna steal this giant thing out the front of my the shop. favorite tony hawks was i think well tony hawks pressure skater 3 is just fucking Great amazing game. but yeah. I think I played a lot of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. And the I fir- was really underwhelmed by that game. Oh, man, I used to love it. came out recently, though, didn't it? No. Or is that Pro Skater 5? Did they do a Pro Skater 5? Yeah, they did, like, a PS4 remake. Oh, no, Pro, Sk- Pro Skater 4 is... Because the new one was just underwhelming. Pro Skater 4 was, bef- like, the one before Underground. Oh, yeah. Um, So it's it's old. That's um, old. Yeah, that's good. But, game. yeah, like, some of the levels, I think there was, like, a zoo that you could, like, one yep. of... Because you had levels and you had, like, time limits in the levels to do as much as you yep. could, like, to get the combo thing and... I remember in American Wasteland, you could do, like, a cheat code. R1, R2, R1, L2, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, X, Y, X, Y, or a square, circle, square, yeah. circle, whatever it was. And you could turn off balance, so you're always perfectly balanced. Uh, and then you could I just remember. do, like, fucking grinds for days. Yeah, you could do that in, like, um in Tony Hawk's 4. And you could get, like... Oh, and you could do like, you could just manual everywhere and you're just like, yeah, you're like, Ooh. you like, don't have to balance. And I was like, man, I'm good at this game. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember, I can't remember which one it was, but I think you could, um, I think it was Pro Skater 4. You could unlock Django Fett because I think you could do Darth Maul in Pro Skater 3 True. and you could do Django Fett and he had a special move where you did this trick and then he jet packs up a little bit. Oh dude, I totally remember that. Yeah. Oh, that just and like you could get blast Wolverine, from the past. At Wolverine as well. Yeah. And I think in Pro Skater 3 you might have been able to get like Spider-Man or yeah. something. It's so cool. In, so in Pro Skater 5 you can upload a photo of your own face and be your character and it like maps it to That's the character. That's terrifying. Yeah, it was super weird. But that, yeah, that game was a bit of a flop. I wasn't super into it. It was yeah. a bit underwhelming. Yeah. I had really high expectations. They're making a documentary about Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. 
True. Apparently. That'd be cool. I'd watch that. I keep keep seeing it on Facebook. I'd watch the shit out of that. It's a promoted article that keeps coming up. They're like, this guy likes Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Hell yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Yeah. I did. I like that shit. How good is it? But yeah, Yeah. man, that's a blast of the past. Yeah. I can't even, like, there's so many games that just define my childhood, Mm. but we don't even have enough time in the day to go through them, because I think that's probably going to be wrapping up the episode today. Two episodes a day. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, in that case, um, everyone like the things on the things, like, follow, subscribe, Apple Music fans, give us five stars, we need it. Um, tell your friends about us. Tell your friends, yeah. If you're enjoying us, leave a leave a nice comment somewhere. Yeah, and just, you know, tell your friends about us. Get yeah. them to listen to an episode. Pick tell a your, random one. Tell your mum about us. Tell she your mum, get like her it. to listen. Yeah, we love mums. Yeah. Shout I out mean, to my, mums. my mum listens and she likes it, so... There you go. Your mum should too. Yeah, she'll probably listen. You, she'll probably like your it. Your mum likes it too, doesn't she? I think so. I hope so. Does she listen? Hey, mum. Hey, mum. Hope you like it. (laughs) Anyway, we'll see you next week. All right, see ya. See ya. Bye.